Dr. Sean is in the house. It's Monday night lecture series talk tune up. Tonight's topic is about unpacking, understanding what is forgiving too fast. Have you ever thought you forgave too fast and then later you found out you feel bitter or uh, you just wanted to get it over with so that it's done? There is a lot of impact for giving too fast. Oh, my hair is sticking up up here, you guys. Sorry. <laughs> There's a lot of impact to forgiving too fast. And um, so that's what we're going to explore tonight. I love tonight's topic. So as you're starting to show up here, let me put on my glasses so I can see something here. Hey, I see you guys are starting to show up. Hey, everybody. Couple of announcements before we get diving into forgiving too fast. If you're inspired by joy, joy is our inspiration because you're doing, either you're doing your work or you're feeling some joy. Those are the two dichotomies, you, dichotomies we play in, especially if you're hurting and you're working on something. There's something so valuable about finding joy even in 10 seconds because joy is my thing. So we have a Facebook group. Joy is a habit because joy, choosing joy in any given moment, not to deny your feelings, push them down, none of that crap. It's more about choosing to find some joy when you're feeling overwhelmed, feeling stress, feeling anxiety, whatever. Hey, I see you guys are showing up. Hey, Bonnie, I see ya. Um, so join our Facebook group. And just so you know, whenever, whatever I mention, I will put links up right after the lecture. So everything I say will be in this lecture. Well, at least most of it. And the salient points will be there too, okay? Um, always give away a prize. Tonight we're giving away are much coveted. Here, did I bring it out here? Where is it? Oh, here it is. Our forgiveness essential oil. You see it backwards. You guys, like no kidding, it's $27. $27 is right. Free shipping in the U.S. It is worth every single penny. We make very little money on this. It's almost all cost. This is pure high-grade essential oil. It's got sage. It's got lavender. Um, it's got yang yang in it and one more thing that's escaping me at the moment. We had it specially made for Project Forgive and uh, the goal is to really soothe and comfort, especially with essential oils. We're giving one away tonight and we'll do that at the very end of the lecture, okay? So uh, be sure to check out our store because we got all kinds of swag. We got swag like we got masks, kindness is contagious masks, looks like masks are back. Um, I'm not going to comment whether that's good or bad, politics aside masks are coming back okay so we do have some masks and they're really cool and they're so cute you'll get lots of compliments we also have our apology necklace that's one of our signature tools i'll talk about that in just one second and that shows you the three steps that it comes with a card that has the three steps on it so our store is rocking you can buy here right on facebook it supports our scholarships or you can go to our website if you feel more comfortable going to the website that's fine too we have everything there Everything we do, we ship. It's here in the U.S. It's all free. All shipping is free in the U.S. And you can also email us if you're out of the country and we'll give you the cost for what it is to ship. Okay. Um, other thing too, and I'm going to ask a favor. If you've purchased our products, and many of you have, would you be willing to leave us a review? Leaving us a review on our website makes such a difference for us and inspires others to purchase because the stuff is so cool and so nice, the products are really, really nice. Oh, you guys are saying some nice things here. I'll look, come here in a second and see what you're saying. So if you purchased in the past, please give us a review, whether it's on the website or here on Facebook or both, we would love you for that. Um, our apology workshop, we had our first one last week, Wednesday, 7 p.m. on Zoom. You had to register for it. It was pretty darn stellar. We learned a lot during the process because it was our first one. Right now, we're gonna be doing them every other month until we secure a sponsor, acquire a sponsor, which we'll do here pretty soon, I'm sure. And um, the class is magnificent. And here's the thing about the class. It's $6.99. If you cannot afford it, or if you're struggling in any way, we have scholarships. Even, uh, we got a check today from Terry Rosenbaum out of Arizona. Terry, oh, I already wrote the thank you note. She gifted some scholarship money so people can attend for free, which I just thought was so amazing. And uh, this community here at Project Forgive is so loving and gracious. And um, the workshop is first come, first served. And if you are struggling whatsoever to pay for it and really want to come, which I highly recommend, 
um, just email us, joy at projectforgive.com, joy at projectforgive.com, and we will scholarship you in, thanks to folks like Terry. Okay? Let's see, is there anything else on my notes? <coughs> Excuse me. I'll also put a link up to register at the website. You can leg register for the workshop right here on Facebook. Um, no one will be turned away because of money ever. That's just not going to happen. A couple more things. If you're new, tell us. We want to welcome you. Thank you in advance for the stars because we use those for scholarships too. Just like Terry sent us a gift. Um, let me see what you guys are saying. Lo oh, all right, you guys are just making my heart sing here. Tonight's topic is forgiving too fast. I'll be there in one second. Let's see what you guys are saying. You're saying hello. Yet yeah, I don't know why I got, I got to blow my nose for a second, sorry, or just at least wipe it. Okay, sometimes when I put on makeup, my eyes water. Does that ever happen to you? And then my nose starts to run, whatever. Okay, let's see. Oh, the glasses are brand new. They're from Lensable. I'm gonna actually approach them to be a sponsor because I had my glasses made from this website fraction of the cost. I needed actual prescription glasses for glasses for readers as well as progressives. I am thrilled. And this is one of my new pair. I couldn't use the Dollar Tree ones anymore, which I loved because my eyes are, both of them are different now. So I had to get a prescription lens. So I'll talk about them. Let's see if we can get them as a sponsor. Um, hi, Clara. I see you. Hi, guys. Sissy's in the house. Yay. I love feeling fresh, showered, dressed up the whole nine years. Yep, I'm with you, Allie, on the forgiving too fast. I'm just looking to see if everybody's saying, Bonnie, I already got you. Hey, Denise, Terry's here. Oh, Terry, I just love you. I, I had tears of joy when I got your letter and your gift today for the scholarships. Mwah! Thank you so much for that. Let's see if I need to address anything else. I see you guys. Hey, Denise, awesome. You're going to love the content. Thank you for all the compliments and how I look. Wow, dang, you guys are just, woo. Hey, Kat, I see you. I see you guys are here. Hi, Mary from North Carolina. Aw, that's beautiful, Lavella. What a beautiful name. Yay. Okay, um, Bonnie, Bonnie, you were there. It was super awesome, wasn't it? You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll connect. We made the, um, the apology workshop a little bit longer, so we had a little bit more time to process. It'll be the same format each month. And, um, and we'll always tackle a topic, like one of the topics that we discussed was the distinction between forgiving versus accepting, and how are those different, and what do those mean? And that was a big part of our discussion, and then of course we did the apology tour, which is something you really, really, really um, want to get good at, because there's a lot of freedom in that tool, I'm telling you. Hi, Denise, I'm so glad you're new. Welcome so much. Look at people are already welcoming you, Denise. Oh, hi, Sherry. What a beautiful thing. What a beautiful thing to say. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, let's see. Anything else I got to say? Yep, Pe Bonnie, I love that you welcome everybody and love them up. It's so exquisite. Okay, I do, I'm really excited about tonight's topic because I'm going to move kind of fast because I got a lot of material. Typically last about 30 minutes or so, so let's get rocking, okay? All right, so just as an overall brief reminder, we are about making the unconscious conscious, dispelling myths, get, having real talk about forgiveness. Forgive and forget is a joke. It's not real. You are not gonna forgive somebody who murdered your child and forget about it. It doesn't work that way. So we like real talk about, about forgiveness regardless of whatever religion you are. Forgiveness is universal. Project Forgive is universal. That's why we embrace everyone. Okay, so. Forgiving too fast is also like a process. How long it takes you or someone else to forgive is very much like your fingerprint. It's unique, it's different, and only you can decide when you've had enough time to process. So with that said, let's, um, let's look at this thing about dispelling the myth that forgiveness is heroic. I rose above it, I forgive you, when actually it lands as arrogance. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like somebody does something horrific and someone says, oh, I forgive you. And then everyone goes to the person who was so heroic and says, oh, you're amazing that you forgave so fast. No, okay. Now here's a caveat, okay. Do you remember this? This happened like in 2006, actually in October 2006, a shooting occurred in an Amish community. Do you remember this? And um, the it was in the news, what, what, I think, um, what was it? it was in I wrote a couple of notes West Nickel Mines School in Pennsylvania the gunman his name is Charles Roberts 
He took hostages and he shot eight of the 10 girls, killing five of them before he killed himself. Okay, so this is pretty horrific, okay? And what immediately happened is the Amish community forgave him immediately. They donated money to the killer's widow and, her, and the three young children that were survived. And it was a big deal. And everybody was commenting about the Amish forgiving. And then I saw an article that I really loved, and this was back in 2016. It was scholars of Amish, and they described and talked about this because a lot of commentators or people in the news or whatever were criticizing the Amish for forgiving so quickly and that it was inappropriate not to see remorse. And such an attitude like that runs the risk of denying the existence of evil. That's the words that were, was there. And scholars of Amish um, understanding said, no, this is not about that at all. The Amish community, um, its life is noted by its ability to let go of grudges, and it's deeply rooted in Amish culture. Um, and the Amish, as a culture, has the willingness to forego vengeance, but it does not undo the tragedy or the pain or pardon the wrong, but rather is an impact of taking a step towards a future that is more hopeful. So it wasn't like, oh, we forgive you. You know, it's okay, you killed our children. You know, we parted, no, 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 no. It was about being hopeful for the future and now let us process our pain and heal, which is spot on, okay? Um, I'll come in your, I'll come in, in a second, once I get through a little bit of material and see what you guys are saying. I'll also put up the, an article that I read about it just before coming on that I thought was so, so exquisite. So with that said, depending upon the depth of your pain, your betrayal, you are human. There is a process for healing and there's several stages to get to forgiveness dependent upon the atrocity, okay? If someone borrowed your car and didn't put gas in it and you're ticked off, that's a lot different than getting breast cancer and you're mad at your deity or uh, a friend is murdered. There's, there's differences in the depth of betrayal, so keep that in mind as we go through this, okay? And when, when there's a deep de betrayal, there's usually five stages. I always talk about five stages. Shock, anger, grief, acceptance, peace. Shock, anger, grief, acceptance, peace. And the two hardest are anger and grief. And I'll elaborate on those as we move through these, looking at these different ideas of what exactly is forgiving too fast. And forgiving truly um, is a process. So what can happen when you forgive too fast? I'll look at that in a second. Let me see if you guys are saying anything that I need to say before I keep moving. You are LOC, don't know what that means. Okay, oh, it looks like they're talking to someone else. Okay, all people are welcoming Tammy. Wonderful, wonderful. Let's see if there's anything. Okay. Lots of comments to under Ray. That's great. Okay. So what can happen when you forgive too fast? I got many. Forgiving too fast masks pain. When you forgive so fast, you don't experience enough pain for each party, being you and the offender, to make the necessary changes to explore what went wrong. It's an unpacking process. It's not a like one and done, get, mark it off your checklist. It doesn't work that. And this, it's gonna sound odd, and I know you get this too for those that hang out here a lot. Pain can be a very good thing if we allow ourselves to grieve because grief is the most transformative property that exists on the planet. I went through major grief when my mother was dying and not just her death, but her inability to be kind. Okay, I'm saying I'm going to say that in a kind way. She really struggled being with basic kindness, and sometimes she was downright vicious. And I had to grieve that a lot of it over and over and over in many cases, so I could still come back to me and my kindness and my love, especially as she was passing, because that can get complicated when you're the only caregiver for someone who's not very nice while they're dying, right? So that's complicated. We've had many conversations on that. I'm sure we'll have many more. And then what about this whole notion, if you forgive too fast, 
resentment, anger, and bitterness build long term. Now you already know this. I know you know this, okay? But in the moment, sometimes you forget it when you forgive too fast. Because anger and resentment in that process of forgiveness often mask pain and keeps the relationship at a standstill. We put emotional walls up and it actually prohibits, prohibits communication, honest communication and exploration and intimacy. Fast forgiveness ignores the fact that anger is natural and normal when you've been hurt. And it often needs to be integrated into your psyche. Anger is so important. I'm not talking about violent anger, hurting people anger. I'm talking about you just being so ticked off that that happened and that person thought they had the right to do that. You with me? Okay. And if you avoid the anger and just go right to forgiveness, this is when some of us eat too much, talk too much, work too much. You get the picture. We're shoveling down our anger. And despite popular misconceptions about anger, and we've done many talks on anger, anger has a raw power in it that when it's integrated, it helps you stand up for yourself. You say, no way, Jose. You start setting boundaries so the offenses aren't repeated over and over and over. And uh, it's, it makes future injury less likely, builds a sense of empowerment for yourself, gives you self-confidence. And at, in fact, research shows that forgiving too easily can erode your self-respect, i.e. feeling like a doormat. You with me, right? And um, it can also lead to greater relationship problems with the people in your life. Suppressed anger, if you forgive too fast, can also lead to, I've got all the medical things, depression, relationship problems, health problems like high blood pressure, heart problems, headaches, digestive problems, and more. There's so much research on, on this, you guys, okay? And the other thing that's really cool is that anger pushes you to confront the offender. Now, which may not only make your life better, it can also make the world a better place because sometimes if someone's doing it to you, I really believe how you do anything is how you do everything. How you do anything is how you do everything. Cheryl, Cheryl Huber coined that phrase. And so people that bully, abuse, assault, humiliate, discriminate, um, just inappropriate, they do it not just with you, they do it with other people and calling someone out and when they hurt you because the anger drives you to call them out is one way to make those changes. And so many injustices happen because no one says anything about them. Let me go to one more and then I'll see what you guys are saying, okay? And, you know, forgiving too soon can sometimes let the offender off the hook. The person who hurt you wants to avoid the pain too by not wanting to talk about it. They just want to move on and by moving on, the offender can conclude that they can avoid seeing your pain while at the same time avoiding experiencing their own. And this, of course, stops real communication and things that really need to be said and done in order to move on. Let me see what you guys are saying. If I need to address anything, I got a few more. Let's see. I'm with you, Denise. I so get it. That, that whole ex thing is a journey. I was married to an alcoholic. I did a journey for years. And now I'm really at a place where I, I don't have any contact with them. I used to invite them even for Christmas dinners and stuff. And I've been divorced. 30 years, um, 15 years in, he'd still be invited to my house, but his alcoholism has progressed so deeply, it's just not even possible. So that Denise, you are in a very long journey, especially with children, right? And uh, you got this, okay? Let's see. Yep, I'm with you on the doormat, Clara. Let's see. I'm looking at depression. Yeah, and so I don't want to give medical advice about the depression. I've suffered from depression myself. Depression is a myriad of many symptoms. Suppressed anger can be one of the symptoms, so let me clarify with that. Yeah, I can get real depressed. But, hey, Sandra's in the house. Okay, so if you're saying anything else before I move on. Got it. Got it, Denise. Perfect. Okay. All right. The other thing is people need to be held accountable. <laughs> <laughs> they screw up. And sometimes forgiving too fast doesn't allow for accountability. 
And um, we're closing off the chance for holding, for helping a person become more mature, especially your children or teenagers. And um, and when we are doing this forgiving fast, we have to consider if forgiving them is actually worth it to do it that quickly. Should they be held accountable for the actions and words, or do they, do they deserve to get off easily? That's a judgment call, an intuition call. Only you know the answer to that. Okay. Here's another one. Forgive me. My eyes are watering a little bit. My nose is running. Forgiving too early after something painful, it doesn't give you sufficient time to explore what was most upsetting about what happened. Because it could be they stole money. But you might be find out after a day or so or a couple of days that you're really more upset about the lying than you are the actual taking of the money. Okay? See, so to process it. Was it the invalidation of your feelings when someone said something? Maybe an affair. Someone has an affair in a partnership. Was it the sharing of intimacy with someone else? Was it the betrayal itself? You want to give yourself time to figure out what you're actually hurt about. Or, and it might be many things all at once because we're complex, right? And to be able to articulate it to the person who harmed you is so important to your healing and it helps you heal faster when you don't forgive fast when you don't forgive fast you actually heal faster because you allow yourself breathing space to to figure it out right and process it sometimes forgiving too fast you're driven by the need to make everything the same again okay i'm just gonna make nice nice anybody ever done that and so we sometimes think if we forgive, everything will be beautiful, much like it was before the, uh, the person hurt you. And the truth is, even if you forgive someone and the relationship is on a healing path, things still might not ever be the same again. They might not. And um, they may be better, but never the same. In fact, when you forgive someone, the other person won't always respond to you the way that you want them to. And forgiving others is an act for yourself. It's an act for peace for yourselves. And sometimes we forgive because it's the right thing to do. Sometimes we do it fast because it's the right thing to do. But the expectation that everything's gonna be the same again isn't always the case, right? And another thing too, when you forgive too fast, you may end up getting really hurt or mistreated over and over again. That Back to that doormat thing. And um, when you forgive people time and time again for the way they've treated you, they start taking you for granted. Have you noticed that? And, um, and especially if you have a sweet, gushy, loving, precious heart, especially empaths, a lot of empaths come here at Project Forgive. And, um, and when people know that your forgiveness isn't valuable, they treat your feelings exactly the same way, like they're not valuable. And I'm not saying this to make them wrong. This is more about you and what you have control over and how you choose to forgive quickly, fast, or in your own time process, whatever that looks like. Um, yeah, okay. One other thought, too. Um, sometimes we give much good-intentioned advice to someone. Maybe someone's sharing about something that really upset them, and maybe we give them the fast advice oh just forgive them let it go that's always not good advice and um it may seem obvious telling a person to forgive too quickly can be insensitive because it kind of is but not everyone gets this and telling someone to forgive when an injury is still recent is dismissive invalidating and insensitive and what if you really find yourself saying well just forgive them already you might want to bite your tongue a little bit and say something like, tell me more. Oh, yeah, tell me more. Oh, I'm so sorry that happened. I can get that. I'm not saying if someone's... Let me say this the way I want to say it. Let's say there's that ongoing complaint. Something happened 15 years ago, and this person, every time you see them, all they do is talk about that grievance. That's a different conversation. You got that? That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about when someone's sharing vulnerably how hurt they feel or angry they feel, don't give them advice to forgive. They're actually in the process of forgiving, so it's almost redundant because you have enough 
knowledge and skills around forgiveness yourself now that saying that would not be the things you want to say, right? Because everyone's different and it can feel hurtful and shaming when you tell people to forgive right away. And when is an injury still recent? Sometimes days, sometimes weeks, sometimes years for people depending upon the offense. Another thing too that I found that I really loved, research shows forgiving too easily makes it more likely that those who hurt you will hurt you again. That's in research. Came from a study by Dr. James McNulty. I know a lot of the forgiveness researchers. I've never heard of him. One of his studies found that those who forgave easily were almost twice as likely to be mistreated soon afterwards. And I'm like, well, that makes sense based upon the research I know about forgiveness. And I've been studying it for 10 years. So, yeah. And, um, okay. I'll look in a second. One, I'm going to give one more reason before I then give a couple of communication phrases that you can use when you're not ready to forgive. So I'm going to give you some solutions, okay? So one more is this notion, if you forgive fast, I only have to do it once, too. It's only natural to want to have some kind of emotional moment or epiphany or an aha where we forgive and then everything is wonderful from that point on. That is not reality. <laughs> It's not going to happen that way. It's usually not the case. I've talked with so many people, consulted with so many people after making a genuine commitment to forgive someone, have had those same feelings of hurt, anger, and resentment come back over and over and over again. And forgiving someone is a process. I mean, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but you get it. Forgiving and healing takes time. The greater the hurt, the greater the time. And when an offense, I love this quote, I don't know where it came from. When an offense from the past stinks, stings the memory again, the act of forgiveness is chosen again. So you get to forgive again. I've heard people say who say that sometimes you have to keep on forgiving a person. Yes, just like you have to keep for a large offense. I look at, I was molested as a child. Sorry for just dumping that so fast. I talk about it pretty openly. I've had to forgive my stepdad many, 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 if not hundreds of thousands of times as I've gone through the process of forgiving being molested as a child. It's depending on the defense, offense, you might have to forgive hundreds of times. You might be at a, I'm at a different place of forgiving my mother again, and she's been dead for a year, okay? Different layering, different levels, different depth. I can actually talk about my mother and smile today, which is huge progress, okay? Okay, good, all right. Um, let's see, all right, let's see if you're, let me come to you and then I'm gonna give you some solutions, some easy phrases, they're very easy, I'll type them in the notes, okay? It's so freaking easy. Let's see, let's see what you guys are saying. I'm so glad this makes sense. Yeah, Betsy, I'm so with you. I'm so with you. That's when the person is not available and not remorseful. That's one of the reasons we created the Apology You'll Never Receive workshop. So regardless of what the other person does, you got it handled because you can take care of you. <coughs> Pardon me. Let's see. Per oh, Michelle, thank you for the stars. Wonderful. Oh, Kasia, Kesha, Keisha. Maybe Keisha. You put the actual pronunciation in there. You must be new. So glad you're here. Yeah, some people just don't have the capacity to forgive. Denise is asking why some people can't forgive when you've done, done everything to forgive, to fix it. Some people just can't. They can't do it. They don't have the emotional intelligence to do it. Yep. I'm just looking. Okay. Perfect. You guys are talking about 22 years. Not sure what you're saying. Okay. Okay. I'm going back down to the bottom. I'm sorry I didn't get to everybody. I hope you forgive. Let's see. How do you forgive someone who will never act, who will never actually forgive? That's our tool for accepting the apology you'll never receive. And um, be sure to check it out. And if you can't afford it, we, we got scholarships. It's all good, right? Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Keisha. I'm assuming Keisha is correct. Uh, I'm with you, Tammy, and you don't have to forget it. Forgive and forget is a myth. You can come to the distinction of acceptance. Doesn't mean you pardon anything. Okay, cool. All right. So here, 
are what to, here's what to say when someone apologizes and you're not ready to forgive. You ready? Here they are. I've got one, two, three, four, five of them. You can say something as simple as, oh, Dr. Sean, I'm so sorry I did that to you, blah, blah. Oh, thank you for saying that to me. That's it. You don't need to say more. Thank you for saying that to me. Here's another one. Oh, I appreciate you apologizing. I have to process this some more. That's it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> How about that? I apologize, Dr. Sean. I'm so sorry. Hmm. You know, I'm not sure how I feel yet. I do appreciate you saying that, though. Close friend and a partner, someone that's very dear to you that really hurt. You could say, thank you for that. You know, sweetheart, I need some more time to process. Can we talk about this again later in a few days? Next time we're together, blah, blah, blah. Thank you for saying that. I need some time to process. Can we talk about this again? Keep looking at it so we can move forward. Easy, easy, easy. Okay? Let's see. <laughs> I did finally say it, Claudine. I'm with you. Oh, Sharon McGrill's in the house. Let's see. Got it. I see you guys. Yep, I'm with you, Denise. Okay. Next week. Control. You're going to see control so differently. I call it giving up control. I've been playing with control. What's good control? What's bad control? We have such a push away from the word control. You control a lot. You control what you put in your mouth. You control how much you exercise. It's kind of like the word selfish. Actually, in this context, selfish would be um, uh, considered powerful. It's selfish to exercise. To how do you look at it? How do you define it? So we're going to look at control next week, next week, Monday. Prize winner tonight. This is how I do prizes, okay? Here's how I do prizes. Well, I'm thinking of one. Let's do number 13, lucky 13. When I say go, you're going to put in hearts, any kind of heart you want. You can put in five hearts, one heart, whatever. The 13th heart that shows up in my feed is going to win the essential oil tonight. Two caveats, you must be present in the, you must be in the U.S. You have to be in the U.S. And um, it's my feed, okay? It's my feed. So it might, the numbers might look different in someone else's feed. We're going according to mine. So the 13th heart, Lynn's heart number one. Now I'll just call them out. Keep doing it. Allie's number two. Allie's number two. We're getting to number 13 for our forgiveness essential oil. Mary's number three, Lynn's number four. We're at number four, we're put Kaylee's number five. And it, I mean it in the comments. Lynn is number six, because I can't see who's doing it when you're just putting hearts up on the side. Allie's number seven, so it's got to go in the comments. I need to make that clear, don't I? Trisha's number seven. Thank you, Sandra. Trisha's number seven. We're good. Clara's number eight. Hey, Sharon. Lisa's number nine. We're going to number 13. Lisa's number nine. Lynn is number 10. Sharon's number 11. Sharon is number 11. We're looking for 12. Allie's number 12. Next one is it. U.S. only. Sharon, it's you. You won the essential oils. That just makes my heart sing because you are the essential oil queen. And I know how much you love them. And um, so we'll get that shipped out to you uh, tomorrow. And um, let's see, if you find this broadcast helpful, please share it. Deeply supports us with our partners and our sponsors like General Motors. And um, because they are inspired by the number of people we reach, obviously, for their businesses. And so when you share us, even if it's articles, even if it's just a poster, you make a difference for us. So anytime you share us, you make a huge difference huge, huge difference. Thank you everyone for the stars. Um, thank you for joining us tonight. We will see you next week, Monday, and the game is control. Okay, we're going to be looking at giving up control, what is control, and defining it. Okay, big love everybody. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.